So I'm here to talk to you about what other people don't normally like talking about. Uh, the act of defecating, the act of going to the bathroom. So this has been taboo in our culture and uh, in, at least in white culture, um, for, you know, a couple hundred years, since like the Victorian era, definitely. Um, anything, you know, in, in England during the 1800s was, anything that had to do with the body was horribly, you know, you, you don't talk about that, you, you stay away from that. So, um, trying to break that barrier down and, and, you know, get down to the facts, get down to the science of, of going to the bathroom. And um, you might think, like, oh, okay, well, what's, what don't I know, you know, I've been doing it for years. Well, I'm here to tell you that you might be doing it wrong. And I'm not trying to persuade you to, 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 I'm not trying to persuade you to think that way, but I'm trying to present the information that medical science tells us in, a, in an objective, uh, non-subjective way. So uh, I hope you all know what a Western toilet is, a sitting toilet. If you don't, you know you're, you're more out of it than I am. Um, but you might not know what a, an Eastern or a squatting toilet is. Here's an image of uh, two different styles. One is raised above the floor, one is set into the floor. And, uh, you know, the style set into the floor probably makes it easier for cleaning. You know, it, it acts as a drain for the bathroom and whatnot. Um, but, you know, there's always people that are concerned with aesthetics. So you have some different styles. Um, so. So here are some ancient toilets, uh, I think these are Roman, and there's a little cartoon guy, you know, seen squatting over that on the left hand side, and there's a sort of a tourist guy on the right hand side, you know, visiting these ancient ruins and, and sitting on them thinking, you know, oh, this is how they used to sit. But there actually isn't any evidence as to whether these are sitting or squatting latrines, you know, communal toilets. Um, when, when questioned, when the International Toilet Museum in New Delhi, India was questioned as to, you know, why, why do you call these toilets sitting toilets, western toilets, um, the curator of the museum responded, we have no evidence, but the archaeologists that discovered it were westerners, so they were accustomed to sitting toilets and, you know, yeah, they look like sitting toilets to some extent. Uh, but more likely than not, because people wore togas at the time, we could tend to believe, and, and most people um, in the world still today do assume the squatting position, um, wearing a toga, you know, it's like a skirt, it's open underneath, so you can much more easily squat and defecate than it would be to, you know, like, lift up your toga, and your toga is sitting all, you know, on this... And this platform, maybe it gets dirty, or who knows, you know. So, so if you're squatting, you know, everything is, is above the ground and, and you're, you know, keeping clean. Um, so, this is, this, you know, kind of different from, from the way most Americans probably think of going to the bathroom. Um, it turns out that from about 2500 BC, when sitting toilets were invented in the Indus Valley, uh, which is like current day Pakistan, India, uh, from about 2500 BC until about 1850, or, or rather the, the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution, uh, sitting toilets were predominantly for rich people or, or, you know, kings, queens, and whoever else, you know, steals from the poor and keeps from themselves. Um, Queen Victoria in 1859 had a gold-plated toilet. And, you know, it's the Industrial Revolution, stuff's starting to get cheaper, uh, division of labor, and all the peasants are like, oh man, gold toilet, I need to get my bling on. We need to pimp, pimp our ride, basically. And, uh, 
and you know, it, it became crazy. Like, everybody wanted a toilet. Everybody was getting Western. Uh, everybody was getting indoor plumbing at that time. So it just sort of fell in that, hey, we have pipes. Everybody has pipes in our house now. That's no longer for the rich. Why should sitting toilets be for the rich? And uh, you know, division of labor, they, they're cheap. So, uh, but it turns out that unless Queen Victoria was really trying to screw over the peasants uh, medically, she was, was, you know, she was wrong with the way she was defecating. And we know this now through medicine. Uh, they're, they're easily, I found several studies, which I have all the citations for. I'm, I'm going to show you some graphs of, uh, of their findings. Basically, if you see in this image, the, this is the rectum in the sitting position, and this is the rectum in the squatting position. And this sort of like bungee cord around the rectum is called the puborectalis muscle. And basically, this muscle is, is bungee corded around your rectum to keep you from, from uh, wearing adult diapers. You know, it, it keeps the stuff in. It, it, it allows you to be under control of when you want to go to the bathroom, or, you know, when to, keep it, when to keep it in, when to let it go. So it turns out that this muscle is most relaxed in the squatting position. It has, it has the, the, the angle of the rectum, and the positioning of the actual muscle fibers is such that it can relax fully in the squatting position only. And by defecating in the sitting position, you're actually stretching this muscle. And just like when you stretch spandex, you know, your underwear too long or, or a rubber band, eventually it loses its elasticity. When you lose elasticity with the puborectalis muscle, you do need adult diapers. You know, it's 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 not under your control anymore. It's called incontinence, and uh, you know it's it's. I don't want to wear adult diapers prematurely, if, if you, you know, or ever if I have to. So, um, so it also turns out that these two muscles on the left, uh, th these two parts of the colon on the left and the right in this next image, um, actually benefit from pressure in the squatting position provided by your left and right thighs. And you can see, you know, it's sort of symmetrically shaped uh, left and right sides here. And not only do they benefit from the pressure provided by your thighs, but the position also helps them straighten out. Um, maybe, they, maybe they straighten out because of the pressure of the thighs, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But, uh, so they're more straight, and this means that they're more more easily able to completely evacuate. So you don't have any crap left inside you. Um, it, it all goes away. And, uh, or, you know, at least it all goes away more easily. Now, maybe, you, you know, you think you're, you're doing pretty okay. It's, it's not too hard for you to go to the bathroom. But if you've ever eaten corn or, or sunflower seeds or something like that, like, you, you eat things that are sharp. Popcorn, for instance. Um, certain food can be sharp, so if you're if you need less pressure, if it's easier, you have less chance of hurting yourself. You have less chance of pressing too hard, trying too hard, straining too hard, and ripping, tearing some some soft tissue in your colon, um, which could lead to serious infection. You know, a appendicitis or something. That's that's a serious problem, um, and whether or not. Whether or not we have, uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, it turned out that you know all these people adopted this sitting style, but they were wrong. They they're you know we didn't evolve to sit and shit, uh, to put it bluntly. Uh, so there's there's been research done on this. Um, here's a graphic here of the ease of shitting. The, the, that the study reported that uh, for six days people recorded how long it took them to evacuate and how, how, how long it took them to evacuate and the subjective difficulty of evacuation. And for six days they, they sat and recorded these things and for another six days they squatted and recorded these things with their, their defecation movements. 
And in all cases, the time and the difficulty were cut in half in the squatting position. Now, you might say, okay, well, is there any neg negative side effects? Um, some people have also looked at that, but it turns out that so some people have looked at that in regards to blood pressure like does squatting squatting does raise the blood pressure slightly by a few millimeters of mercury um, but to counter that opposing studies have been done to measure the pressure the abdominal pressure when you're sitting versus when you're squatting and the amount of force it takes abdominally and uh, what that does to your blood pressure. And it's found that in the sitting position, it takes so much more force that it completely like obliterates, it, 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 it spikes your blood pressure really bad. And you know, for people with heart problems, this can be a serious issue. So if you have heart problems, you, you definitely don't wanna be sitting on the toilet. Um, and, and you know, there's, there have even been, this is pretty recent studies too, like the one that I don't have here um, was Japanese, uh, was like two years ago, and they, they even had like x-rays of all these, you know, of sitting, of squatting, and like sort of halfway between. They did x-rays of what the actual angle of the rectum was, and and uh, they measured inter-abdominal pressures, and, and uh, you know, some, some really intense crazy stuff. So, you know, break the taboo and pop a squat.